Welcome to Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Hello and welcome to another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I am your host, Scott Haskin, and I am here with another song from the album Into the Wild, and the song is Into the Wild. We're doing the title track today, and here it is by Uriah Heap. All right, we got a whole plethora of things going on here. We have this really nice, almost sci-fi or space feeling, uh, really warm keyboard intro from Phil. And then the Hammond just kicks right in, doesn't it? That Hammond sound is so powerful. And uh, it almost sounded at first like the the sound was there and the recording cut it off. But I listened back a couple times and it just sounds like the Hammond just comes in really, really harsh and strong. You get a nice drum build up there. You got some really great backing vocals that are kind of in the distance. We can't really hear them with a lot of clarity, but they're there. And that's really nice because we don't really get that a lot from the band in this era. So it's kind of cool to have that. And then just this build and this heavy riff, um, everyone sounds just really powerful. And, um, you know, you you know that you're in for a good rock and roll tune when you have an opening like this. Okay, so here's what I'm hearing, and this is kind of a contrast to, um, you know, I can see you. There, there is a good amount of bass in there, but it's not at all overbearing. It's actually nicely mixed in on this song. Um, however, guitars, I'm hearing two tracks. I'm hearing one that sounds like it's just picking, and then I hear another one that's kind of playing the riff. But that one is in the background, which is kind of weird. And the bass and the organ are taking a little bit more of the front um, you know, uh, of course, without having to say it, I'm going to say it anyway. Bernie just sounds fantastic. Um, but the keys are really powerful. I love what Phil's playing here. I love the sound of the organ that we're getting. Um, bass is really strong too. Of course, Russell's playing just rock solid. Once again, kind of riding the crash a little bit in there. Um, but not too distracting this time. It's, uh, it's not really taking away anything. It's mixed. This song is mixed a lot better so far than the first couple that we've heard. So let's see what happens from here. I really like the way that the band is following the vocals, but I like how the vocals switch at the end of the line and give us something a little bit different, you know, something to kind of break up that rhythm a little bit. That's really good. Uh, great, powerful uh, note from him at the end from Bernie of uh, that one. But the music is very tight. You know, it's a, it's a good up-tempo song and it's very strong where we can hear the guitars. I think we're more feeling the guitars than hearing them on this one. You know, we're getting the, just the j j of the, of the distortion, but not really hearing so much of it because the keys and the, um, the bass are, are taking the foreground as well as the vocals, of course. Um, but the, the drums that I love Russell's kick drum sound, especially on this song, it just, it's punchy yet it cuts through at the same time. It's EQ'd very, very well recorded very well. Um, this is a good one. So I feel we're about to hit a change. Let's see what happens. All 
I love that fill from Russell right there. That was great. Um, yeah, so this is a return to the opening vocal where we could hear it with a little more clarity. What's going on? Uh, sounds great. Just really nice and strong voices working together. Uh, very tight. I like that. This is a great production. Um, I like those bass slides too, but to to point them out, you know, they turned up the bass a little bit to give us that. And I don't necessarily think that that was needed. I think we would have heard them just fine where the bass was, but this this feels like they turned it up a little bit because the rest of the bass got heavier. But of course, other instruments were dropping out to feature the vocals. So again, when you change the players, the game changes. And sometimes just taking out one instrument or two instruments can completely change the sound of the other instruments. It changes the mix because the volumes now uh, aren't on the same calibration that they were when those other sounds were in there. Even though you have new sounds coming in, so we're dropping out some of the instruments to bring in the vocals, but that doesn't necessarily equate to the same balance for the bass. Follow. Um, it's uh, it's a real challenge when when you have music that changes and music should change. The song should evolve. It should have different parts. Um, I like this where it's kind of a little bit more ominous. That's kind of fun. But um, yeah, it, it is a challenge as an engineer to know how to compensate for some of these things because the the space and the space that's filled in completely changes. And you really don't want to just move the instrument to another panning position because that just feels weird gee, well, the bass was slightly in my right ear. Why is it all the way in my left ear all of a sudden? It just, it doesn't, it's unsettling. If you're going for unsettling, you can do that all day long and it's a great technique. But most of the time you're not going for unsettling. So it becomes a little bit of a challenge for the engineer. But I have to say, uh, apart from that bass being raised just a little bit, um, this is really good. This is another great song for Trevor. You know, he's got a lot of dynamics in there that sound really good. He's going up to some higher notes instead of just laying on the low side to thicken up the low end. He's a very creative bass player, and uh, I really like what he's playing on here. I like when he does those little runs. Uh, those are always nice, but I like when he's just playing, and then all of a sudden he's like, you know what, I feel like playing on the other side of the bass guitar, and he just hops over and starts off with a higher note and then goes back down again. Um, he's done that quite a bit in his time in the band. And I, I like that. I think it's got a good feel to it. Um, very good bass player, great drummer. Just as we were heading into the verse, Russell went back to writing on the crash cymbal again. And this is, if you were to listen to this and listen to like, I can see you back to back, or maybe cut out those chunks and compare them. This is dialed in much better. It's okay to ride on the crash cymbal all you want, as long as it's not overpowering in the mix. The last song I felt was overpowering in the mix. This one, I think it sets perfectly in there. It's not overshadowing anything. Uh, it's also not over the vocals. But I think even if it were, I think it would be quiet enough to be heard and felt, but not seen, if you know what I mean. Yeah, see, I'm going to go with what I said earlier, because he kind of repeated in this part, the bass got louder again, uh, again, whichever circumstance, whether they uh, lifted the fader a little bit or whether it was because other things were were dropped out a little bit and featured the bass more. Um, but I do think that the bass is hitting just that right about on the edge of that starting to be overbearing um, level in conjunction with what's going on behind it. Again, I love the bass runs. I think they're fantastic. What he's playing here is great. It's just a matter of it being a little bit too loud in the mix for my taste. It's also starting to drown things out a little bit. It's it's messing with the drums. And, uh, you know, being a drummer, I'm never going to be a fan of that uh, unless it's intentional. So, um, yeah, it, just, just a little bit more care put into the mix and this one would have been good. But overall, uh, apart from that so far, I think the mix, the rest of the mix has been fantastic. I keep my feet to the ground They ride me down Got no mercy But I never will be found Oh little sister Don't you cry You know I cannot stay I gotta find a place A place to hide 
Well, before we get into what I suspect is going to be an organ solo from Phil, um, I just want to talk about this part a little bit because now we, we've switched things again. Now we're back to the way it was in the beginning where we can hear the guitar a lot more. And actually, I think we hear it more now than we did in the beginning and a lot less keyboards. Unless he's just hitting some accents, um, I can't really tell what else he might be doing. And then, of course, you know, now it's guitar, bass, drums and vocals. And so the song has switched yet again. And it's it's really interesting when you write, you write those dynamics, too. You know, you, you say, OK, I'm going to back off a little bit so that you can shine here so that this can come through this particular sound because it's more important than what I'm doing. Um, it, it's all part of the writing process. And then, you know, when when you send it to the mix, it can it can completely change again. But, um, you know, not necessarily in this case, but that does happen. It's uh, overall, though, uh, I, I really like the balance of the instruments. I like that the song features different people at different times. I think that's really nice. I think there was a, a swell in here from Phil that I really couldn't quite identify, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I heard one building. That was a fantastic trade-off between the members. I really like that. Um, I love, so I, I did listen back on this this pass and there was a swell at the beginning of that keyboard solo, uh, which was really nice and then led into a, a little bit of a powerful Hammond solo. Then we get Mick. I thought we might be doing a trade-off back and forth a couple times, but um, even just going back to where the riff comes in, you know, you can hear the guitar a lot better now. It's more clearly defined um, again, just because we're, you know, we're moving the pieces around on the board, but it really was a powerful solo. I like what both of them played. I think that, um, you know, the rhythm section really held it together and it's, you know, it's at a really good pace. So you can play a faster solo. You can do a lot of dynamics and it'll fit the song a lot better at a tempo like this. It's not so fast that the song feels rushed, but it definitely is a good drive and pounding song. What you hear about me. Yeah, I really love the sound that Russell's getting out of his drums. And they're so well balanced and mixed that, that a feel like that, you know, there were some so many albums where I felt like Lee's drumming was really understated because of the way it was in the mix. It was muddy. It was in the background. Um, but what we're getting from Russell here is very clear, really punchy kicks, bright toms, good pop and snare. Um, we're getting a really, really good mix out of the drums right here. Uh, and that fill was a, a great example of how good they they sound right now. Um, but I love this part. I just love the unity of the band in this. I love the energy. I love the changes in mood in this song. Like when it goes into that that chorus, it just feels completely different. But yet you feel like you're in the same song, like you're in the same house. You've just gone into a room that feels very different from the rest of them. Maybe it's haunted. I don't know, but it feels different. Okay, that was a little weird. Um, very abrupt ending, and it sounded like they cut off the the symbol a little bit there. Um, in any case, that was a, a great build towards the end. You know, changing the uh, not the the speed or the tempo of the drums, but just changing 
the style of it, you know, going from uh, the way it was played to kind of a double time play. A uh, really nice build there. I really like that. I love how strong the vocals are during this section, too. Just everybody working together. It just sounds fantastic. And um, yeah, very powerful song. I really like it. I, I love the variety of focus on the instruments that we get. I think that's pretty cool and pretty unique because it used to be like whatever. OK, this is the instrument we're featuring in this song, and that's very common. But here we're getting, wait, check this out. Oh, wait, no, check this out. Oh, wait, no, check that out, you know, throughout the song. And I really like that. I think it's a very strong song. Definitely one that, you know, uh, it has kind of a gothic feel to it, doesn't it? Really big sound. Um, But overall, if I just wanted something to, you know, get me going or pick me up or whatever, this would be a great song to pick to do that. Um, Very good song. Very good song. I'm really glad that they put it on. I can see why they made it the title track. Um, definitely one that you could say represents the album and where the band is at this point very well. And speaking of very well, it's time to very well end the show. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. I appreciate it. I hope that you guys have a fantastic day. And guess what? We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>